coming on your old ukulele. Constance's Kitchen for today's talk. She says, I should change my venue. Might change my luck. Anyway, isn't that cool? It's just like the kitchen in Leave It to Beaver or Father Knows Best. Let's talk about nothing. We just finished up uh, three days on Frederick Codd's uh, beautiful little masterpiece, INRI, about the Hermetic Rose Cross. Okay, and we went through the, uh, the Rose Cross as uh, his commentary on the Golden Dawn uh, five equals six, or even the AA five equals six uh, uh, initiatory grade. And uh, I tried to do the same thing when I when I wrote uh, uh, Understanding Aleister Crowley's Thoth Tarot, because that that uh, the back of the the Thoth Tarot card, this image right here was what first actually attracted me to the, uh, to the deck. Uh, that image hooked young 27, 28 year old uh, uh, Long Duquette into, uh, into this wonderful Kabbalistic world. Uh, but uh, as I grow older and I get I get more input and more information from from uh, other sources, a lot of the stuff that I, I sort of grasped uh, partially with my neat brain is starting to unfold and make make uh, a far far more profound and breathtaking sense to me as as uh, as the years go by. And one of the, the concepts is this idea that precedes everything. And it's three kinds of nothing. Now I've tried to show this in a little piece of art that I, that I threw together. I'm not the artist, Constance is the artist, but uh, see that little dot in the center. That's, and then there's Two other echoes. There it is in kind of three dimension. Out of a like a negative singularity there, and out of that burst, uh, burst three, three rays creating up and down and right and left, and forward and backwards, and and in a sense, uh, all everything came or all somethings came out of three kinds of all nothings. Okay, I try to explain this as I'm describing uh, the, the Rose Cross uh, diagram in, the, uh, in this book. Now, I know many of you are also friends, as I am, with the brilliant uh, Laird Scranton. Uh, and Laird is uh, an expert par excellence on the Dogon cosmology, the cosmology of the Dogon tribe of, of uh, Africa. Uh, they're the ones that, that uh, worship the twin star Sirius before there were telescopes and stuff. Uh, amazing, amazing story. And the more you get into it, the more your mind becomes blown. But uh, 
part of Laird's almost uh, uh, daily postings uh, concerns the, the Dogen's point of view how uh, existence, I mean literally existence, uh, pulses back and back and forth in a in a serpentine kind of uh, uh, kind of motion. Uh, uh, everything springing out of nothing going back into nothing and it's far more beautiful, elegant and complex than that. But it it harkens back to what the Kabbalists were trying to get across when they thought of these concepts of the three kinds of nothing that something eventually came out of. And the, the thing I'm trying to uh, uh, share this morning is, look at it this way, there are three kinds of nothing, okay? And their dynamics, the dynamics of these three kinds of negativities, echoes into three kinds of existence. It's almost like the dynamo that is this set by the, the interaction of these three kinds of negatives echoes on the other side to the three kinds of somethings that are, that are originally created by up, down, right, left, and, and uh, uh, front, back. So in other words, existence itself, up, down, right, left, front, back, okay? And motion within that space creates time. So time and space are just echoes of this three kinds of nothing. I'm not, Laird comment on this and, and straighten things out. But I tried to uh, uh, talk about that as uh, my introductory words on the comments of the Rose Cross. And I start with, uh, with the point here, that little tiny point in the very center of that rose cross, okay? That point. In Harris's painting, it's almost impossible to see the minute white point at the heart of the tiny rose at the very center of the design. If it's not there, it should be. The white point symbolizes the shining point of pure existence without size and yet without position. It is not really a point at all, but a state of infinite potentiality. It is the germ of creation before creation begins. And we'll soon see this point is the inscrutable nail that crucifies the tiny rose to the tiny cross. It also affixes the small rose cross to the large rose cross. Now, just where the point come, came from is a supreme mystery. And Kabbalists have soared to dizzying altitudes of speculation and argument in their attempts to understand and explain it. One very popular theory involves three inscrutable qualities of nothingness. That in the dawn of pre-creation, now we're not talking time before and after, it's even before that, okay? So we're not talking about chronological time here, we're talking about I don't know. One popular theory involves three inscrutable qualities of nothingness that in the pre-dawn of creation somehow ended up focusing or constant or contracting to a point. And that's would 
that would be where the Dogons would would see the line where it bursts from the negative back into into uh, uh, positive existence. Okay, that line that the serpent is going through is that point. They called these three veils Ain, Ain Sof, and Ain Sof Or. Ain spelled Aleph uh, Yud Nun. 60-61. Uh, nothing that is so nothing that it negates the concept of nothing as an absence of something. In other words, we can't even say it is nothing because there is no it and there is no is in this kind of nothing. second kind of nothing they called Ain Sof. Limitless nothing. Now this is nothing defined. There is now an it in the statement it is nothing. And the third kind is Ain Sof R and A-U-R means Limitless light, positive emptiness. There is now an it, and it is, in the statement, it is nothing. Those th three things on one side of the existence veil are three kinds of nothing and on the other side they will echo into the point up down right left front back which creates space time and existence as we think of it I won't drag us deeper into these musty, misty musings. I only bring it up because, as we'll soon see, there's one tarot card, the Fool, that characterizes this or these wonderful non-states of nothingness. But we'll meet the Fool soon enough. Let's get back to the point. Obviously, it's impossible to grasp the true nature of, pre of this pre-existent point but is the essence and identity of absolute deity. It is also the essence and identity of your own secret self. The real you that exists at the very center of all things you mistakenly think are you. If you truly understand the nature of the point, you understand the nature of yourself and deity. A graphic artist or a photographer would tell us that the massive and complex hermetic rose cross develops outwardly from this central point. A film director trying to illustrate this concept might want to start with a close-up of the point, then slowly move back to show how the various components of the cross develop. We won't do that. To really see and understand the essence of this great design, we must go inside the point. We must zoom the camera of our imaginations in, past the circumference, past the white nothingness, into the very heart and germ of creation. The cubic stone. When the haze of nothingness disappears, we're presented with the image of a cube of what, what appears to be a plain white stone. The ancients symbolized the point as a white cubical stone that contains within itself the potential of all creation. 
When we take a moment to consider how a cube is constructed, we come face to face with the first great secret of the Kabbalah and the answer to the question, why does the tarot have 22 trumps? Okay. First, in order to be a cube, a point needs to extend in three dimensions, up, down, right, left, and front, back. That's what I tried to... The perspective is like they're rows, infinite r rays going out from... Okay. But I, ha I had to limit, you know, my image of it because uh, my little poster board thing here is only so big. Okay. But it's supposed to go on forever. I'm sure you put that together. And so here's figure three, or figure six, constructing the cube. And you see a little, see the three rays coming out of the point that creates the top and the bottom of the cube and the right and left walls and the front and back walls there, see? Okay. These three dimensions create seven positions, the center and six sides, that create 12 oblique points or edges up to the cube. So we got three, seven, and 12. There's our 22. Kabbalistic tradition tells us this is how deity formed the 22 letters of the sacred Hebrew alphabet by which all things in creation are verbally ordered into existence. The Hebrew alphabet is divided into three mother letters attributed to the three primitive elements, seven double letters attributed to the planets of the ancients, and 12 simple letters attributed to the 12 signs of the zodiac. And these we talked about uh, yesterday and the day before when we discussed Frederick uh Hermetic Rose Cross. Uh, I'm going to skip over... Uh, Oh, as long as the cube is sealed, creation is put on hold. And these two 22 magic power letters, three dimensions and positions and concepts, remain suspended in a state of brooding potentiality. They are like the invisible germ at the heart of the acorn that throbs with the potential of an eternity of future oak trees. In order for this sealed cube to initiate creation, it must sacrifice itself upon a cross by bursting open like a kernel of cosmic popcorn. And when a cube pops open, it forms that cross. Creation begins and we move from potentiality into actuality when, like a living stone, our white cube unfolds as a golden cross of six squares. Once open, it reveals its secret nature, a rose of five petals. Okay. Now, I didn't mean it to get us too, too far deep uh, into uh, reading from this text, but I just wanted to, to share with you the, the idea that, that those initial uh, three dimensions bursting out of an inscrutable center point going up, down, right, left, front, back, creating space-time are merely echoes of, on the other side of the, the veil, echoes of those three kinds of nothing. And just as the the three directions, up, down, right, left, front, back, create six walls with their central point, creating three, creating seven. And those seven with the intersecting walls create 12. That's how that big giant rose cross is an echo of that. So, in a sense, this is why I call the little rose cross the rose cross of being 
and the big rose cross as the rose cross of manifestation. What do you think of that? I, I've got, let's see, I've got plenty, plenty, I've got plenty of nothing, and nothing's plenty for me. I've gone mad, haven't I? Thank you for coming along. We'll see you tomorrow at the same time, hopefully.